Now in a brand new pack. Salt was a highly prized commodity for centuries and is rumored to have been used as currency in ancient Greece and Rome when paying soldiers wages, hence the saying, worth your salt. It's not as valuable these days because we get more than enough of it. In fact, we get too much salt, which has been shown to increase blood pressure in individuals who already suffer from hypertension, high blood pressure. So, Andrea, what's the daily recommended intake of salt? The recommended intake is between four and six grams per day. Because remember, we need salt in our diets, a little bit of it. It's part of our electrolytes, very right. important functioning for the, or for the functioning of your heart, brain, muscles. The nervous system, all That's of that. Right. Yeah. But unfortunately, we eat too much. The average South African diet contains nine grams of salt. So it should be six, it's now nine. Mm. Okay, that's a big difference. In fact, if you extrapolate that over a month, take a look at this. This is 180 grams in a month. This is 270 grams in a month, a big difference. Take that over a year, take a look at this, and this is how much extra salt we're busy putting into our bodies. Look at that. I mean, that is just far too much salt. Eh? That's, That's not good for us. That's way too much, no. So my question to you, Andrea, help us. How do we cut down on that salt intake? Well, the place to start is where we get most of our salt. 80% of what we consume is through processed foods that contain hidden salts. Now, we know we shouldn't snack on savoury crisps and things like that. Oh, yeah. But even in perceived health foods like olives, gherkins, feta cheese, um, salmon. salmon, yes, that's smoked salmon, biltong and bread contain lots of salt. And each of these portions represent your maximum allowed salt for intake day. for the day. Oh, yes. No. So the message there is you can still enjoy them, but in moderation if you've got high blood pressure. What about our fresh foods? You're going to mention that, surely. Potassium, huh? Definitely. Um, if we talk about salt that's not good for us in excess, we're talking about sodium chloride in fruits and vegetables, especially things like celery, tomato, onions, and fresh herbs, we have a mixture of sodium and potassium, which is very good for us. And if you cook with these veggies and fresh herbs and spices, you need to add a lot less salt. Um, because of the extra flavor and the potassium in there as well. What about our canned foods? Canned foods, I mean, I think most people know that in something like tinned beans or in um, tinned spaghetti, there's added salt. But even something like tinned peas contain lots of added salt and sugar. So that's something that we shouldn't really add to our diet. <laughs> Fresh is always best. And such good advice, read the labels. Please, whatever you do, read those labels. Let's talk about adding salt to food. Megan, where are you? Won't you join us? Let's do a little experiment here. As Megan comes up, Andrea, what we're gonna do is I've asked Megan to uh, give us three turns of the salt mm. grinder. Hello, Megan. Hello. Um, and three shakes of the salt shaker and three pinches of uh, you know salt that you often get in a restaurant. And we're gonna measure it on this very fine scale and you're gonna figure out how much you're adding so let's start with the salt shaker. All right. One, two, three. Okay, let's see, and that gives us 0 0.09 of uh, a gram, I imagine, right? Out of there, let's zero that again. Back to zero, okay, 0 0.9. Okay. Next one, three pinches of salt. Imagine you're sprinkling over a wonderful steak, you know. Okay, there we go. You got tiny fingers. Okay. <laughs> That's not bad. 0 0.06. So, so far, that was the least amount of salt. That's interesting. Didn't think that would happen. <laughs> All right. And let's zero it again. And the big culprit, the grinder. All right. Grind for us, man. Grind, grind, grind. Okay, three grinds. Let's. Oh, my word, 0 0.32 grams. Okay, so, I mean, that's just an excess amount of salt, Max. Wow. So, what do you learn from this? I learned that the grinder has more salt than the, the salt. Well, when you grind salt, when you're adding you more salt grind, than yeah, you normally do. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And I was quite surprised to find that your pinched salt was far less salt than the actual salt shaker. But again, you've got these dainty fingers, so that's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Andrea, what else? That was kind of comparing what the salt that we add to our food. What about salt alternatives? There are different types of salt. You get the uh, molden salt, Himalayan crystal salt, and also vegetable salts. Okay. And all of those contain a little bit less sodium and add a bit, specifically the vegetable salt, add some extra vegetable extracts, which is nutritious and you need less salt. Let's taste so. some of that vegetable salt and see if that is actually salty. Hmm. There you go, small little pinch. I'm gonna try some with She's you. very brave. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wow, that's very salty. Okay, huh? very, very it's amazing salty. amazing to think that that's less, uh, less yeah. sodium. Yeah. 
And you see, because of the extra flavour in there, you would, you, you would use less in your okay. food. Well, that's the okay. idea. Well, Megs, thank you so very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Don't use the grinder next time you put salt <laughs> in your food, okay? <laughs> Lesson to remember. Andrea, you've got an alternative there in terms of soy sauce. That's right. I mean, soy sauce is something that people perceive to be a healthy alternative to salt, which is not always the case, because soy sauce typically contains lots of salt and MSG. Okay. But there are some MSG-free options available and also reduced salt. I mean, there are these chili flavor, thick sweet and sour, and the garlic, ginger, and sesame that contains 50% less salt. And our audience members each get one of these in their goodie bags today. Brilliant. Do, do I get one as well? Or? Yes, of course okay, you can. just checking. That's fantastic. <laughs> you know what else is good news? And I'm not sure how many of you know this, but you can actually scale down your taste for salt. Taste perception can be manipulated, can't it? That's right. For salt and for sweet, the less salt and sugar you use in your diet, the less you'll actually need. So if you gradually reduce your salt intake, your taste perception wouldn't really notice after a while if you gradually reduce it. And the flip side of that coin is also true. In fact, the more salt and more sugar you use, the more mm. your body actually wants. So we've been focusing on hypertension specifically, but you know, too much salt also escalates the risk of osteoporosis, ladies, by causing increased urinary loss of calcium. All the more reason to cut down on our intake of salt by limiting processed foods, reducing the added salt on your food and using alternatives, and again, manipulating your need for salt. Vital. Now in a brand new pack. I want to live the best life.